Dear Future Enoch, a couple of months ago, I was lamenting about how I recently lost my job, but still hopeful that things would ultimately turn out well. And then a week later, I found a job that was both permanent and full-time. I didn't want to say too much about it at the time, just to avoid disappointment. But it's been four months, still working here, and I'm happy to say that I passed probation unceremoniously, but still something I'm incredibly grateful for. Like, for the past couple of years, all I really wanted was a job that was stable and permanent. Even if it was just part-time and without benefits, it would have been nice to have a job that didn't have a ticking time bomb strapped to the contract. And while with my current job, I still kind of wish I had an office that I had the option of going into, I'll take what I have, which is not having to commute and saving a lot of time. And money. I mean, today is a great day not to have to go out. So passing probation has meant that I finally get health and dental insurance, which is fantastic. The weekend after I lost my job, I had to go to the dentist to get fillings, and it was $400. Nothing stings more like being freshly unemployed than being freshly unemployed and stuck with a massive expense. I'm grateful that 2024 has thus far started out on a positive note even if I had a bit of a rough start with a rough New Year's excursion. Again, I'm not really looking to get rich or anything. All I want is a stable, secure job that provides enough to support myself and have some left over for savings and for recreation. I know people have all sorts of opinions about careers. For some, a career is their life. For me, a career is a part of my life. A couple of years ago, I helped an elderly concussion patient clean up his apartment and rearrange his workspace and gather his books. He was trying to rebuild his life and re-enter the workforce after 10 years of treatment. Excruciating pain that required him to be prescribed a joint a day. Doctor's orders! He wasn't rich and in fact was struggling a little financially, but he wasn't ultimately concerned about money. He put it this way, I work to live. I don't live to work. His work brought food to the table and paid the bills. But it didn't define him. He had a life outside of work that he could enjoy. Yes, he liked his work, and yes, his work was important. He's a psychotherapist and a former chaplain. Two jobs where you deal with people at their absolute worst and try to pick up the pieces of their life and help them put it back together. When he got the concussion, he was unable to go to work. But he didn't stop being himself. And when I was in his apartment, picking up the pieces of his broken life and trying to put it back together, he was lively and bubbly, pain subdued by the THC, and he was telling me about his life before the concussion. How, after a long day's work at the clinic, or a long day's work at the hospital, he would take time off and enjoy it. He went on vacations, traveled to different countries, Showed me a chandelier that he bought from the Czech Republic shortly after the Iron Curtain came down. Those were things that his job enabled him to do by providing the money for it. He didn't work for money's sake. He worked because money lets you do things. Money is a means to an end. He worked because he needed to live. In no way was he downplaying the importance of his work. But he was saying work wasn't everything in his life. And he made sure not to allow work to consume his life. Fortunately, I have an incentive to take vacations at this job because at this company, vacation time doesn't roll over into the new year. As the battle cry goes, use it or lose it. Maybe that's a good thing. My family's not one to do vacations. Maybe I'll be the one to change that. Future Enough, I'll see you next week.